And then, of course, anything that's terrible, we'll just edit out. <clears throat> the power of post-production, man. Uh, welcome back. This is Jeff with uh, Stamina Training here in Seattle, and I'm with Patrick McNulty today, who is the um, head of revenue over at Attentive here in Seattle. And the thing I really love about um, you know how he describes himself is that he's really into the, uh, the psychology of sales while uh, really digging into some details and understanding how like diverse businesses operate. Um, and, and then what motivates the humans behind those. So before I like ramble on and on, I'm just going to kick it back to you, um, Patrick, and, and welcome. I appreciate you, uh, you you jumping on and sharing some of your opinions here as we talk about uh, reasons to be optimistic and, and resilient as, as we take advantage of some of the opportunities that, that we're presented with. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I didn't realize that was my LinkedIn title. Uh, my team jokes with me. That changes every few months. I just make up something and... Uh, that, that was the one. But yeah, that is, the, I, I do, I had up all of our revenue activities at Uptentive. Um, so that's sales, marketing, SDR, uh, product, that all reports up through me. Um, and Uptentive, if you want to hear a little bit about us, we're a, we're a business who helps brands um, engage with their customers. And, and we really are, are our key that makes us different than some of the larger brands that do VOC or surveys is really, we like to get into those shifting consumer emotions. So how does that consumer emotion shift? And then how do I act on that? Um, and we help some of the largest brands do that. And I can get into some stories around that, but um, thanks for the shout out on my, on my LinkedIn profile. That's uh, I think psychology is key to sales and that's really a, a key to how I try to approach a lot of coaching and, and just sales in general. So. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And, and I want you to expand just a little bit about how you guys go about it. I mean, is it, you know, um, more of a digital marketing approach? Is it more of a, a app approach? And, and, and sort of who are those people you're talking to? Because the psychology, as you mentioned, shifts. And so you have to be nimble to be able to take advantage of that, I would imagine. Yeah. So the consumer psychology or the brand or my prospect or where do you think we should? I mean, there's a lot here wrapped up. Well, start with um, sort of, I guess, your, your, your perfect ideal, you know, prospect that you're talking to. Since we are speaking to a sales, sales leadership community. Sure. Um, so our ideal customer profile or their persona, historically at Aptentive, has been a product person, somebody who manages the mobile app. Um, and that was for a long time, I'd say five years ago, before I even joined, somebody who's very technical and probably like shoved in a back corner of the office, like, oh yeah, it's a mobile app. Yeah, we, we think we need this thing, but we're gonna get to go ahead and develop one anyways, right? Like, yeah, right. you know, it's good. Um, and we've recently accelerated in, in COVID, you know, it's, it's interesting, C19 has really accelerated this trend. We just listened to Yahoo Finance podcast this morning, all these CEOs talking about how C19 is, maybe artificially accelerated digital transformation. They're like, oh man, I don't have a retail presence anymore. How do I talk to customers? Mm -hmm. And they're starting to realize like, oh my gosh, all my digital properties and their app, their phone is this, this, this sign post, this listening post. And so our ideal customer, pers the persona and the profile has shifted from the product person over time into more marketing. So product marketing management, the acquisition, the loyalty marketers, because brands started to have this app and then a lot of them realized, wait a second, an app isn't just an app. Like why do people spend time downloading something on their phone that's taking up real estate? Not just like data real estate, who cares about the data, but like mind share. Like I've only got a certain number of clicks in mind I can get at a day. Why the heck am I gonna download some random app? Well, the app is inherently a loyalty program. Like we talk to people like Macy's or Starbucks and they say the best of my best customers are in the app. The people at Macy's who download the app and use it regularly, they're frequent shoppers. They probably have a credit card, right? Starbucks users, these people are in there getting coffee every day, probably using points, maybe have a credit card. Like again, this is a loyalty play. So we've went from being a product uh, persona into marketing, into loyalty and retention. And then we've quickly kind of vectored in a different way, which is, Oh man, um, personalization is really big. So now we're talking to more people who are on the data side, um, you know, chief data officers, people who actually can use this, put it into a data lake or into a snowflake instance or some, some way that they communicate all their systems together. And we've re really rapidly moved. And that's been challenging, I'll say, for, for our sales reps to adapt to. Mm -hmm. How do I say the right thing and ask this question? Now, for a senior person, 
Like you and I, we can have just conversations with people, but when I'm trying to train up an SDR with a year or two of experience, they're like, what's the script? What question do I ask? How do I get there? And I'm just like, wow, I'm trying to teach people to become improv artists because we are dealing with product marketing, data, VOC. And sometimes, sometimes the title is not indicative of what they even do. So I need to even, even if I have that person's title, like head of revenue, like myself, I may rapidly shift what my duties are in one minute to the next. Right. So that's a little that, bit about our persona. And does that change the, or has the ch- conversations changed dramatically because of, of COVID-19? I, I like, I like you using the phrase C-19. That's new to me. Um, does it, Rona. <laughs> does it, um, is, is the conversation shifted? Are, are these people who now maybe have put less emphasis on their, on their mobile apps currently now like, holy cow, we need it? Or are they need, do, is there a conversation to be had about jostling them to make them wake up to the new reality? What's the, what's the ground look like? I think in general, people are all waking up to the new reality and they realize mm-hmm. once we exit this period, life's not going to go back to the way it was. We've heard mixed reviews. Like there's some very large brands in retail who have taken very quickly to our, our, our advice, our guidance to them on how to message customers. And we're like, please, God, don't send another email that says you're working from home and you're staffing certain hours. Like nobody cares. Right. Like I got 30 of those that first weekend, 30 emails, 40 emails. I unsubscribe <laughs> from so many people. I'm like, I didn't know you had my email address. Who are you? Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. So we've been really active and we have a lot of brands now being like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We had a, a top 10 financial brand in Europe um, ping us back and they they were fairly low level um, senior manager and a director who we work with at a large financial institution. That's pretty well down the org chart. Um, but they pinged us back. They said, now given this time that our branches are closed and we are literally the only way to talk to customers in the mobile app, that's our only communication channel. Um, everybody at this company knows the power of Aptentive right now. So that's been really cool to see like, holy cow. Wow. Now we're really critical for these companies. So, and it's, but it's a mixed bag. Some, some brands are like, oh, we need to run this through um, corporate oversight and our legal team to make sure we're saying the right things to customers. And we're like, oh boy, those brands are probably going to die. Like, right. If, if I have to have these big corporate governance projects to be able to talk to a customer, um, Oh man, like, it I really don't... is. It, that's a good. It really is a life or death thing for certain companies, isn't it? Because if they can't, if they're used to having this retail presence and they can't talk to their customers, how else do we do it? We were all, we're all constantly. That's right. On our, on our, or, or if they know, do, devices. they have these call centers and like think of Alaska Airlines in our backyard in Seattle. They got swamped with calls and they can't even. T- I mean, they were literally. On, they had callbacks that were like twenty-four to forty-eight hour windows where they're going to call you back. That's because mm-hmm. their queues are so long. And so, you know, the good and bad for them is we've been using a little bit of that message. Obviously, we want to be empathetic. But in sales, I want to get to the pain uh, because people are three times more likely to, to move towards pain, right? It's the aspirin versus the vitamin. You can tell, extol all the virtues of this vitamin, but people just want a painkiller. They just want that right there. So we've actually been shifting a little bit of our messaging to something that wasn't at the forefront. It was clear to us, but it wasn't necessarily something we'd lead with, which was usually we talk about you know, um, reducing churn and building loyalty and all the, all the really cool marketing things. But now we're like, Hey, we can help you reduce your call center volume during this crazy time. Like your call center is going through the roof and you're paying eight bucks a call to service that. Why don't you just open up a line of communication in the app and, and chat with them for much less than you ever would than a call center. People are going, Oh my gosh, I never thought about doing it that way. That's amazing. So there is an element of people like, oh, they're waking up to the idea. And Alaska is a good example. I, I mean, months ago, I was on a flight that got uh, delayed and the Alaska app was outstanding for me to be able to chat with somebody while standing in line. Yep. I was very grateful that they had that. Uh, and, and I suppose that's the, that's the space that you're living in. Um, what about shifting just a little bit to opportunities that are going to come out of this? Because like you said a second ago, this is the new reality. And you're obviously sitting in a space that is active as opposed to, unfortunately, a lot of people whose space kind of went away and you, and you have the cure for some of that cancer. But what's, what's when, you know, the, the waters are going to recede, we'll get back to our new normal. What are some of the opportunities you see out there? Yeah, so we're fortunate. Um, quick serve retail is one that we have about um, it's five or six out of the top 10 QSR brands. Um, so the quick serve, fast food, quick serve retail, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it's important. So Aptentive in its history has worked with all sizes of business. In the past few years, we've really narrowed our focus to work with the largest brands uh, globally that have the largest consumer bases because ours is one where while we do enable things like chat, um, we don't, we just facilitate that. That's still, they need to manage that on their own. We manage, how do I talk to customers at scale in a really Mm -hmm. intimate environment? And so QSRs have been one um, just to kind of, that have been interesting. Like, I don't know that it's positive. I don't know that it's negative because like McDonald's is still open, right? I can go to the drive through but they're starting to realize that, wow, like the ability to piggyback off what Starbucks has been doing forever, which is mobile order and pay. Like I can order on my phone. I pay. I just pick it up at my, at my discretion. Like that's been really valuable. So they're doubling down on features like that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so that one probably will be positive for them and for us. Another industry that we're in, pretty heavily is travel and hospitality. We work with oh, three of the top 10 international hotels. We work with a handful of the top airlines. We don't work with any of the big three, but we work with pretty much everybody else. And they've just been on budget freeze for at least two to three months, they're saying. Um, now we're talking to them though, and we're fully expecting like this glut of consumer demand to just hit them pretty quickly. Like I think in a few months, everybody's going to go back to booking trips like crazy because we haven't been able to go anywhere. Um, But right now we've been really just helping them. um, If a customer logs in to their app, uh, helping them just message their customers more frequently um, to let them know how they're dealing, what they can do, how do they get refunds, things like that. So we've been actually instrumental for actually helping people, helping these large brands communicate a couple of verticals that we actually see pretty tremendous uptick. So at the beginning of the year, we called out two verticals that were going to be really good for us. And, and one of those was uh, financial institutions like banks, credit unions. They are already going to digital, uh, undergoing a digital transformation. They've been pretty slow to move that way. And a lot of banks don't build their own technology. They, they, they go to third party agencies who built it all for them. Obviously mm-hmm. it's pretty expensive to keep up on this. Now the big ones, B of A and City, they have billions of dollars that they spend on this stuff, right? Um, but that's one that we've actually seen a tremendous uptick in our business. So we, we measure uh, like daily active users on our attentive platform. Like, okay, who from the brands is logging in? And we have seen an uptick of people wanting to consume um, feedback data. Like, what are customers saying? How do I then use this to make a better product, to make a better whatever it is that they're trying to sell, a better experience? Um, we've seen an uptick in a few industries, some of which are, some of these industries are holding, some of them are kind of neutral. A couple of them are like, oh my gosh, we need to do this. We need to do it yesterday. Let's accelerate. Um, which has been positive, you know, that's interesting. I'm, um, something you said about how people are holding on for the next few months. I mean, uh, I'm having lots of conversations with, with sales leaders and I'm hearing a couple different stories. One is people are stepping on the gas. They recognize the opportunity. They want to come out of this on the forefront of the waves, they can you know, surf and be, and be ready to go. Some are holding tight, right? Perfectly normal, like we're not gonna spend anything. And there's an undecided factor in there. Yep. What do you, what do you as, as, a, as a leader of a sales team, what do you say to your people when they're getting the, I'm not spending any money for two or three months? Because this doesn't seem to me like it's a dead conversation. It ought to be a very um, open conversation. It's just that it, navigating it, we all hear it, right? Always. Um, I think it's, it's, it's kind of back to the not taking no for an answer. Like you're, you want to be respectful and empathetic that that's the process and you don't want to say, well, okay, talk to you again in three months, like Mm -hmm. salute. You basically want to set like a mini milestone to be like, okay, when that does happen, now let's create a work back plan to say, okay, we're probably going to be in procurement for six weeks with X large brand and we need to get buy-in from this group and we need to do this. So like, let's continue to do the things. Like we know that there's a need. We know you want this. We know you don't have budget today, but guess what? When that frees up, like, let's be off to the races. Let's not start the race then. Let's finish this thing and get this going for you. So I think it's, it's been, and a couple of my reps have different styles. Some are a little more aggressive. Some are content sellers. Some, and and it's, been, it's been really setting those mini milestones to be like, okay, let's at least block and tackle now. Who are the people in the org that we need to multi-thread? Who's a financial decision maker? Who's going to want to? check the box. Who's one of our blockers that we need to like do right now to kind of talk through. So I think for us, it's, it's a mix of empathy, but actually when they say, Oh, budgets are paused for two months, 
that's actually a bit of a buying signal that they're interested. So I'm going to press forward and say, great, like let's take this time now to put all these pieces in place. And so yeah. that hasn't been easy for some of my sales reps to really jump on. They're kind of being like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to be super empathetic. I know everybody's situation is different during you know, COVID and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you can lean forward. Like we know that what we, what we provide is tremendously valuable. Like we have, we're lucky that we have, you know, SaaS industry average around 13% churn annually. Last year, 2019, we churned 6% of our revenue. So I said like, I'm trying to empower my reps all the time to be like, Hey, what you're providing, we're not just selling some other software. Like this isn't just a job. Like you're actually helping these brands help consumers. And so you should feel powerful that like, yeah, it may be a weird time. You have to utilize some empathy, but then like take that step aggressively forward and ask them like, okay, let's chat next week or maybe two weeks. We, you know, your budget may not be open for three months, but let's get this thing on the track to getting signed. For sure. I love that. I mean, you, a few months ago, the big, the big debate on LinkedIn was, you know, you know, do cold calls still work? And now everybody's just talking about, well, should, I, should I even call somebody? Should I call somebody? It's like, and, yeah, and, you should. And I think, yeah, I think that as, as, and I love that you got the optimistic statement, right? Because you've got salespeople who are on the forefront of businesses everywhere. We're the ones that should be making that decision and leading it. And I'm seeing everybody say, look, you're not going to blast somebody's door down, but people are looking for solutions right now. Oh God, We're, yeah. People in sales are, are, you know, are lifeguards that are talking to a bunch of drowning people in a lot of ways. So I, I'm glad to hear you say that. I mean, I'm in the same boat as I put my sales and marketing hat on for my own stack and my own people, my own processes. Um, my director of marketing who reports to me, her and I are going to go through a process next week of it's like, okay, um, we had like a hundred grand in, in events budget. We didn't spend, right? Poof. Yeah. Like, Okay. That's great for our cash flow position as a company, but we can also repurpose a bunch of these tools that we thought we needed. I'm like, let's take a really fine tooth comb and let's say if I could, so she has five people on her direct report. If I could el el eliminate 50% of their day-to-day -day tasks, what else could they do? Because there's a whole bunch right now where we can just say, if it was just, if it was okay or like slightly doing a little bit better, it's like, uh, I'm inclined to just put that on autopilot or cut it. And let's go after the stuff that's aggressively growth work because now is a good time. You know, we want to keep the lights on. We want to focus on our customers. But for the new business side, of, like, let's just go, let's go all out. Like, there's no reason not to. There's no reason not to. So, so it sounds like you have a, a, a deep belief that it's out there. I think it's out there. It's just going to be changed. And I think, again, for, for products like ours, we're in an interesting spot in that we have, a, we, what we sell is, is a, it requires change. Like, I always, I always tell people, yeah, you can get our SDK, our software development kit, set up in four hours. You can launch a survey in two minutes, but guess what? I'm selling you a three to five year transformation. Yeah. Like if you think this is going to happen for your company overnight, you're crazy. I'm, I'm telling you, you now have to talk to your customers differently. You're used to talking to about 1% of your customers reactively. When they call you, you talk to them. Now I'm actively saying, we want you to go to talk to 30 to 50%. So three or five out of 10 people where you used to talk to one out of a hundred reactively, I'm saying go proactively talk to those people. And so in a, when everything's hunky dory and business is good, people are like, yeah, that sounds cool. And that's interesting. But now it's like, Oh my gosh, actually you're, you're right. I do need to talk to more people or the other brand is going to do that for me and I'm going to lose that customer. So it's, it's totally. an interesting way to frame. Like it, it, I don't want to say we're going to profit from a downturn, but like it's almost there's going to be winners and losers in the big brand space that are in retail and have a physical presence. We're trying to really push the envelope now to say like, things aren't going back to the way they were. This is an interesting time to start to accelerate that change for your brand. Hey, listen, and I'm guessing when things were good, companies are saying, how do we make sure that we make, you know, the best company growth profit we can? Yeah. Why would we change that philosophy in a downturn? I mean, I get that we need to be empathetic for somebody who might have lost their job or not doing so well, but we also provide solutions. I mean, yeah. So uh, any particular skills you think that salespeople need, like you're giving your team today that's different than it was two months ago? <sighs> any particular skills? I think um, we had a, a leadership team debate around what do we do differently? Do we change our goals? Do we change objectives? And I said, nope, objectives stay the same. Everything stays the same. Like we've literally set up the framework, the meetings, the goals, the objectives, the quota, everything we do is, is a solid base and nothing's going to change 
for our, for our employees. Like everything in their personal lives is probably changing, right? Like period. Right. So when they come into work, when they put on that, that jersey, boom, they're in it. They put on that Zoom call. I want things to be the same for them. Um, we, we have given more space, and I particularly have given more space for my enterprise team to talk. So usually I have a Monday 9 a.m. call, which is a revenue call. It's more of the state of the union, the success, how are we driving the business forward and keeping those revs turning. Um, I then have one-on-ones during the week, sometimes every two weeks. But then Friday, I do a, a 9 a.m. roundtable, and that is, um, that is purely unstructured time. It's a structured meeting about nothing. It's like a Seinfeld show. It's like we just, <laughs> it's like you, anything goes. You can talk about anything. And then I have a, a tactical meeting, 9.30, for the AEs and SDRs to go off, our accounts team to go off. Everybody kind of goes off in a case, okay, let's be actionable and like close out the week strong. And then on Fridays at noon, I have an office hours, which again is more unstructured. How do we as a team learn from each other? Um, and that's been beneficial. But what I've done is actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 a.m. Um, basically, I call it a coffee is for C19 closers. <laughs> so it's, it's a little riff on COVID and closing. But it's like, hey, it's almost impossible to get an enterprise team to meet multiple times a week. I got a rep in Boston. Everybody's at home now, so it's all fine. But now it's like, more important than ever that we are listening to the pulse and we're sharing stories. And so twofold, I use that call for the reps so that they can get confident and hear from their peers and hear what's working, what's not working. But I also, I also mine that call, feed it back to my leadership team, my CEO, my head of finance engineering product to say, okay, here's this list of negatives and here's this list of neutrals and positives. And I said, right now, I've only got a couple negatives. Some people are saying they're pausing budget, but I've got a couple people. Literally, we just landed a meeting with a national sandwich franchise on a Friday in dead in the middle of quarantine. Like our SDRs are still pumping meetings and our, our guys are still closing. We closed a two year deal with, uh, I don't want to give away the brand, but they are a, a national retailer chain of, you know, they're, they're in every, every, every city, every town you can think of. And they're like, yep, we know we need Aptentive. We're going to actually sign up for two years to get better pricing. So we've had a lot of good stories, but we're also very transparent in those calls. Like everything's not hunky-dory. There is some industries that are not doing well. Um, but it's, it's the framework we have in our week-to-week has been really effective. We're not changing that. I've just added those daily now calls, 15 minutes stand-up, just a pulse check, right? Everybody's right. on Zoom. I can see the nine-box grid. Everybody, like just getting everybody in into the same location and talking about it has um, given a ton of confidence to my team. And we actually just yesterday did our, our OKR for Q1 review and we had a big town hall meeting and we had a bunch of breakouts and I overwhelmingly heard that like um, my sales team was kind of like a beacon of hope and like a rock for the company to be like, everything's actually doing okay. Like we're on the front line. We're talking to customers. They're moving forward. We still got contracts rolling. And that to people who are in product or engineering or CS or on the other side are always dealing with the problem side of it. We're kind of a little shaky. And then after they came out of that, I heard just really positive things to say like, okay, having salespeople talk to one another constantly and then disseminate that across the org has been highly motivating and positive for the rest of the company. That's awesome. Especially like it's, that's great advice for sales leadership too. consistency and communication. I mean, yeah, like, you know, there you go. I mean, obviously, but, but that's, that's such good stuff. All right. Um, we're in, you know, where we're in Seattle, we're in like, like week four of all of this, you know, three, four being not allowed to go anywhere. And it's like that, Groundhog Day, man. I'm like Bill Murray. I don't know. What, how much longer? What's your prediction? How much longer before we're all uh, back to work? Uh, well, they just announced uh, no school for the remainder of the school year, as you know. Um, a bunch of my camps are canceled for the kids. Um, I don't know if all of them are. Um, back to normal. I don't know. What does normal mean, Jeff? Uh, the, new, the new normal. When can, we, can we go out and have a beer? Um, without six feet of distance? Because we've been doing that with my neighbors just in the, in the cul-de-sac yeah. here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know. I think it'll go back. I mean, I think this summer will alleviate a bunch of things. Summer in Seattle, are you kidding me? Like summer anywhere, I think we'll start to kind of come out of our shell a little bit. It, it'll be interesting to see brands' reaction, like the big sports teams, the big venues, yeah. still maintaining cleanliness. Like I think it's a, it's a great thing. Um, I, I don't know. July 4th, I think things will be fairly normal again. I don't know. 
I'm, 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 gonna, need a hair, I'm gonna need a haircut before July 4th. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Same here. Let it grow it, out, man. I, I, I don't have a choice. It's either that or just buzz it, and I'm not ready for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I, it's, it shifts. It shifts. I mean, depends on who you talk to. I think that they could, they could say, everybody get back to work, and, and we're going to raise some of the restrictions tomorrow, but people aren't going to just run out the door. Or no one's going to a, a Mariners game. I mean, there's usually six feet between you and the nearest people anyway at a Mariners game, but, you know, I don't think anybody's going to feel comfortable in, in big groups for a good while. I think it'll take some time. I mm-hmm. think you're right. I, think, cool. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a bad thing to be honest. I mean, and you know, I think we've been fortunate. We are itching to get back on the road um, from a sales perspective, just to see customers. We really pride ourselves on uh, whether it's my team on the revenue side or our customer success managers or more of the implementation side. Like we have goals to see customers on a quarterly basis. Um, so that, it will be nice to get back out, especially a lot of our events that we do are not the big, trade shows they're really the small intimate 60 to 100 person events like in rancho bernardo or in miami or in boston so we do really small intimate things and i hope that's not impacted as much i feel people will be more likely to get into a 50 person uh, event than yeah. a 5,000 person right and i think there's an element and tell me what you think on this that we've been thrown into the deep end with this all remote thing all the time i mean yeah. most of us are comfortable with zoom meetings and stuff but now we're like going to wake up to the reality that, Hey, we can actually be productive and make money and do all of this. I mean, how much is that going to change that things like I've got to travel from Seattle to New York to visit clients? Mm. I mean, I I think it will, I I don't know the the impact for each industry or SaaS company, but I think we'll be more comfortable closing two, three, maybe $500,000 annual contracts over zoom. Whereas before, like I was pretty confident if it gets over a couple hundred grand, I better get my butt on a plane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Expectations. Yeah. I think that will start to push up the average contract value or recurring or whatever you, whatever you think about. Like, I think, um, I think the expectations are just changing around that. And like, I I still want to go see people. I think, I think people will still be open to meeting face to face in small groups. And mm. that's really important for some enterprise and larger deals. I think we'll just that mid market, that commercial space deal sizes will grow without having to get on a plane. So we, we could, you know, our magic numbers, our CAC, like any ratio you use to evaluate your efficiency will probably get better because we could just do it over a zoom. Oh, I imagine, you know, decision makers are going to be more comfortable saying, yeah, sure. We, we now we realize we can do this now. It's not a thing that other people do. We have seen some marketing, Um, what have worked for us in the past on marketing, like casual browsers, uh, people downloading content, um, not be as effective just in short term. I don't know if that's a long term thing, but we've seen people, you know, we have this huge 100 page benchmark report just loaded with content that we produce. Usually downloads spike here. Like we have tons of people download it. It's really been trickling out. And I I think just in general, um, that translates into like, uh, I'm a dad, I got two kids, you're, you're a dad. People just don't have the time. They want to get right to the point. It's like when I'm working, I'm in work mode. I'm going full throttle. I don't have time to do all this stuff. So like cut to the chase. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've really echoed that to my sales team and my, my SDR. It's like, yep, get on, do the pageantry and the pleasantries for the first minute. Uh, uh, just like cut right to it then. These people don't have 30 minutes to sit around for you. Like if you can get it done in 10 minutes, do it. If you can get that email down, cut like just good, great general business advice anyways. Like, edit, just edit, 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 and get to the meat of what you're trying to say. And you're not going to offend people. Like just get right to it. It's an email. Yeah. I totally agree. Awesome. I'll let you go unless you've got anything else that you've got to share with everybody. Oh, I don't know. What, what should I share with people? Um, I think one of the funny things that's been really interesting for us is, is having some of these, uh, I'll, I'll switch over my video. Oh here. yeah. Go back to the pickle. <laughs> just having, some, <laughs> having some of these fun things we start with, like, uh, sometimes we do makeup, like we make ourselves a twin or this. Maybe I'll do my hair here. Like I've got makeup on now or I can become a potato. <laughs> there was a funny meme on this, on some boss who wanted to, people to take him, whoop, people to take him really seriously. He's like a potato. <laughs> so I think it's, it, this has been fun for us to experiment with. Like within the first 30 seconds of a call with a new prospect, you want to take somebody's guard it's, down, it's be a great. pickle, be a potato. Put on, a, put on a virtual wig, like it just cuts through the crap. And then it's like, okay, we can still have a business conversation. Let's jump back over. Let's get to the heart of it. Like it just, 
it's such it's so disruptive in that short time period. It's fun. Everybody's in the same boat. It's like okay, we're human. So, so that, that, there you go. That's, that's the best possible takeaway for sales uh, techniques you can use right now. Be human. Just disarm people immediately and, and just cut right to the chase, man. Awesome, man. Okay. Th- thanks, thanks a lot. Jeff. Appreciate yeah. it.